I mean, uh, Rick is still out? Yes. He's not here. Is he on vacation? Or? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Yep. It's delightful. Mm-hmm. We're up. We're up. We're up. You Thank you. We're, we're a little early, so uh, let's do it. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance is the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the 19 May 2014 Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting. All members are present and accounted for. Uh, Roman 1, public hearing RSA 33, small d, one possible issuance of refunding bonds. Sir. Ma'am. Good evening. Um, we have an ongoing relationship with uh, the Brian Millimet, who are our bond council out of Concord. Uh, they handled our TANs. They've handled some other bonds that we've done before. And they work with a group known as Roosevelt and Cross. I think it was six to nine months ago, this group came through and said, you have some um, bonds that are callable, and would you consider re- refinancing them? for it uh, to be in your favor of uh, interest. We did at that time, but before we could literally get going with the process, the bond market changed dramatically and the uh, project no, no longer was viable. I did give you a summary sheet and the magic number is the percentage of the savings should be, before they even do anything, greater than 3%. What I've shown you here is, and this was done two months ago, is a summary of the refunding results for we have a callable 2004 bond, 5A bond, and then two related to the infrastructure, uh, Kings Highway, and the infrastructure. Um, grand total that we're playing with right now is $5.1 million, and the projected savings is 6.6%, which is over the magic number three, and the, currently the estimated savings over the next years going out through 28 is $425,000. So therefore, we felt that it was uh, in our interest to pursue this. One of the criteria was that this would be a private placement versus going out uh, into the marketplace with a complete uh, synopsis, etc. Uh, they generate large um, books and we did not have the manpower or the time uh, do the transition in my department to do that, but they felt that they could look at a private placement, and so that's what they're pursuing. To do this, they have requested your permission through a resolution. It's in your consent agenda, and it would be, uh, we're asking for the board to sign it, but basically what it says is that we have certain bonds that are eligible uh, for refunding, and it looks like um, there's a net interest cost savings to us and that you allow us to pursue uh, with the bond council this project and proceed and of course if and when we do find um, interested parties we will be uh, looking back to the board for the issuance of said refunded bonds. Ellen? I am all set. Mike and I have gone over this and discussed it, and we feel it's the best thing for the town to do. Wonderful. Thank you, ma'am. Selectman Wilson. Uh, I was disappointed last year when I asked if we could do this, but you explained, you know, that we couldn't at the time, given the uh, situation in the bond market. Thank you for being creative. Great. Actually, they came to us, so, but I take the thanks. Selectman Wilson. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. So do you, do you require a motion or anything? It's just part of the consent agenda. We're good to go. I believe that would work. Is that correct, Mr. Manager? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. That is great. Thank you. And that public hearing is closed. Uh, did we open it? Did you the get any public input? Did we get any public input? I guess we did not. Opening the public hearing at 7.03 p.m.? Any public input? For Roman 1, public hearing on RSA 33-3, colon, small d, possible issuance of refunding bonds. Seeing none, no further comment from the board. 
Okay, uh, I move that we close the public hearing at 7.04 p.m. Seconded. Second. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Roman True Public Hearing RSA 674-40-small a, Roman Free Acceptance of Streets as Public Ways, 1 Quick Claim D, Juniper Lane, B, Nersessian Way, 2 Warranty Deed, Huckleberry Lane, Bayberry Lane, Linden Lane, and finally Delta, Juniper Lane, small portion of roadway. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, uh, we've been working on this area now for about three years. We have received deeds to all of these individual streets. If you refer, I gave you a, uh, a large map, a uh, tax map, and I'm going to start on page one, the front. Uh, you'll notice I've uh, highlighted off uh, tax map uh, 96, lot D2, 2D11. Mm -hmm. It's part of this process that 5.107 acres is coming to the town. And we're in the process of going to conservation and, and uh, planning board to determine uh, their answer to the question of whether or not we should accept the deed to that property. The road above at Great Gate Drive is in process uh, for deed to come to the town. Downer Drive is already deeded to the town. If we go down to the third sheet, you see in, in yellow highlight uh, Juniper Lane and Narcissian uh, Way. Both of those are contained within the quick claim deed that we've received from the developer. On uh, the next sheet, you'll see highlighted in green, uh, Linden Lane, Juniper Lane, this is the small portion uh, off of Huckleberry, Huckleberry Lane uh, in Bayberry Lane. We've received uh, warranty deeds for all of these properties. Uh, and we would request that the board under RSA 674-40-small-a, accept these roads as public highways within the town of Hampton. Thank you. Attorney Jerome. Yes, uh, I did want to note that uh, each of these roads were also the subject of warrant articles. Um, in the 2013 warrant, Huckleberry Lane, a portion of it was the subject of Article 24 and the rest of them were the subject of article, Articles 29 and I believe 30 in the uh, 2014 warrant. Uh, those articles uh, provided for um, <coughs> acceptance if we got release documents mm -hmm. as to ownership. This route that the manager is proposing tonight having these deeds in hand is slightly different and a little bit more streamlined and I think is, is uh, once we, since we do have these deeds is more effective and so I commend him for chasing down some sources to get them and uh, once you get your public input if any then the motion would be to accept each of these under RSA 674 colon 40 hyphen small a Roman 3. Wonderful. <coughs> we, uh, Mr. Chen, we do have the, uh, the Greens to thank and um, the original subdivider to thank for um, this work. They got together and, and uh, Mr. Sanderson and the, and the, uh, the Greens and uh, made sure that we received these deeds so we can close these roads out. Thank you, sir. Slepin Yeah, The difference marked between a quick claim deed and a warranty deed. Yes. I, as I, uh, and I did ask the manager about this and I appreciate your asking it as well. <coughs> Uh, a warranty deed warrants your title um, so th that if there were indeed to be a, um, a claim going uh, as to that title, then it would be, there would be a recourse in a quiet title action uh, with potential damages. A quit claim deed uh, gives all the title that one has, whatever that may be. And um, the quit claim deed, as I understand it, uh, Fred, is for the older uh, portion of these roads, is that right? That is correct. Uh, going back many years, so that the uh, there's probably a great reluctance to give a warranty deed under those circumstances. Yeah. And that's that's the difference. I, I would normally uh, want to see a warranty deed, but when something is that old, we're lucky to get even the quit claim. So it's a um, vague. Um, area that this property occupies, it's hard to document, etc. So we're getting 
the best we can get. It, it's, it's strictly because of the age, as I understand it, okay. of, the, of the road going back as far as it did. Okay. And I have a question on 115. I'm assuming the mark in there, um, Fred probably put that for our benefit, is where that awful drainage system is. No, actually, um, I see the little mark here, so I'm That's as far it. down as the portion of um, Huckleberry goes. Where that little black line is? Yeah. That's, there used to be a... Down uh, which way? From the left up to the middle or from, from the right down to the middle? In from Route 1A. Uh, like that's that. where the original Huckleberry ended. There was a cul-de-sac in front of those two buildings to the right. Um, the other portion of Huckleberry from that line all the way up to North Shore around that corner was accepted by town meeting. And we already have a deed for that. Okay. So from from your mark to the left, swinging down. To my mark, off to the, oh, as you're looking at the page, I'm to the right, to the right, if you're looking at the page, this direction from is what we're accepting. Right. From here down, we're all set. Yes, ma'am. Yep. That's and correct. Is, is this in the neighborhood of that drainage, or? Uh, one more house down. Oh, okay. So, that, but it's, it's this in the direction. vicinity. This direction. So, what we're, okay. One more house down it's here. It's in there. Right. Okay. So, this, we're accepting that part. And I can't see the end up here, but where does it uh, end? One more sheet. One more sheet. It ends at Route 1A. Ah. Okay. And the deed, the dimensions do tie out to what's on the plan. Okay. And you're comfortable? I am. Uh, okay. At least we have some uh, some valid deeds in Reasonable our hands. Reasonable resolution. And oh. which portion? Now, what what is the Conservation Commission accepting here? Um, actually, the Conservation Commission is accepting nothing. That 5.1 acres is going to the town. Oh, okay. Because that's what the original subdivision indicated it had to do. Okay. Okay. Well, that's not on the docket for this evening, but that's that's what will come to the town after we go through the five uh, the 14 a process okay. of holding two public hearings and a meeting for a vote. Okay. Slocum Woodell. Fred's comfortable, Mark's comfortable, I'm comfortable. Wonderful. Uh, we'll open uh, the public hearing RSA 674 colon 40 dash small a Roman 3 acceptance of streets as public ways at 712 for public comment, please. And seeing none, a motion, please. I'll move to close the public hearing at 713. Second. Unanimous. And we just await the next public hearing, the second public hearing. Oh, no, second. there's only no. one public hearing on this. On this one is the hearing. one and only. This is the one and only. So what is the appropriate wording for the motion? Um, to accept these uh, streets as uh, as public roads under RSA 674 colon 40 hyphen Roman 3. Okay, I will so move. Second. Second, okay. second by Mr. Bell. <coughs> Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mark. Roman 3, public comment period, please. Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Preston. I'm Charlie Preston, Glenn Carr. I'll make it brief. I like the way the chairman's been around these meetings, and I admire it. It's been really good. Um, I want to talk briefly about Town Manager's report, Section 9, about the DREAD and the Joint Operations Plan. Uh -huh. I, I did speak to Fred informally. I spoke to Mike Houseman informally, mm -hmm. and I don't know what changes are on there, but I'd just like to throw this out there that... Um, whether it's involved in it or whether it's possible it could be amended or we can work on it for next year. I mentioned to Mike Houseman, and this was uh, something that was brought up in the Hampton Beach Area Commission about getting some parking spaces for Hampton residents or workers down at the State Park. Up towards the front, towards the Marianne Motel, which the space is available quite often. And trading off, giving Dread some spots down by our new pump station that looks beautiful down there. And what it was about was their destination, I understand, is some of the trash comes to town and some is going to go elsewhere now. And where their destination is the dump, we might be able to help them so we don't have trucks all over the boulevard all the time <coughs> hauling trash. And this has come up at both the HVAC meetings and at, and at the Hampton Beach Village District meetings. So we get them close to their destination. Lots of times when they offload their trash, whether it's the raking stuff, which I guess is going somewhere else this year, that's offloaded at that looks like a boat ramp now across from the Ashworth where they drive on and off the beach. So there's some possibilities that we can help Dredd and, and, and they can help us. 
We can get them closer to the destination of the dump. We can take the trucks off the boulevard for trash. And the residents in town could pick up some spots down at the state park and, you know, employees. And it, it did come up at different meetings down the beach. And I don't know if it was touched on at all, but maybe it can be amended or maybe we can look at it and get the discussions going forward. And every year it's been getting better. It's never looked better down there. The town in dread, we keep tweaking this dread uh, joint operations plan, and we're all going forward, and it's a, good, it's a great thing down here. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Further public comment? Yes, Chairman. Good evening. Jay Diener from the Conservation Commission. Um, we had a painted rain barrel auction scheduled for this past Saturday, and ironically, we postponed it because of rain. Um, so I just want to let the folks know that we rescheduled that for Saturday, June 7th, which is going to be the same day that we're going to be installing a demonstration rain garden at the Hampton Library. So please keep that on your schedules. Thank you. Thank you. Further public comment? Um, on your agenda tonight is, uh, under first appointment is Michael Schwotzer as finance director. Uh, this is perhaps the last night where Mr. Schwotzer will be doing these financial reports uh, on his own. And um, eight years ago, um, Mike uh, started in his position and within a month of his being hired, the town manager who hired him left, <laughs> leaving, <laughs> leaving the town in the, in the hands of an interim manager as well as, uh, as Mike. Um, and it has been a wonderful eight years to work with Mike. Um, we went through a whole budget cycle. Mary Louise was chairman of the budget committee. And what we emphasized in that cycle with every employee who appeared was how lucky we are to have the kind of managerial employees we have and experience counts. Mike brought a wealth of experience from the private sector and it showed throughout eight years. Um, but I want to say that even more than that, as was evidenced by uh, his retirement party on Friday, uh, he is held in uh, tremendous affection and the highest esteem and it is well earned. And, um, we will are fortunate to have him with, with us as a consultant for the new finance director, but I just wanted it to be recognized what a valuable asset and a tremendous person he has been for the town of Hampton. Agreed. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you. I thought we were only hugging him because he does the hula. <laughs> Any further public comment this evening? And seeing none, Roman for announcements in community calendar. Sure. Yeah, I just want to uh, say that last week on one of the only nice days that we've had, some of the nice days, I took a walk down by the main beach. And I just want to comment on the improvements down there and in a number of businesses who are good citizens that are putting money into their businesses, improving. Mm -hmm. And I would just, uh, you know, encourage all Hampton residents to go down there and visit the beach and to uh, go to the businesses down there because they're doing a great job on the beach. As, as Charlie said, it looks better than it's ever looked, and it's beautiful. Well said. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. I have two items. Uh, first of all, since Jay Diener is still here, incredible job by eighth graders on those rain barrels. I cannot believe the talent for these young people. That, that is amazing, and I hope the public gets a chance to go in and see them <coughs> before you have your auction. But that just outstanding. Um, the second item, uh, certainly more serious, I think it's appropriate for us as a board to express our sincere um, condolences to uh, Brentwood community uh, and to the uh, police department in the Brentwood community for the loss of Officer Arkell. Uh, I am uh, distressed, as I'm sure many of us are, and it puts in mind for all of us the risks that the public uh, servants and the uh, f first responders um, do for us but then the risk that they put themselves at. I'm hoping maybe we can get together as a state at some point in time and, and help to uh, see if we can do something about preventing these, these terrible problems. But our condolences to, to his family and the, and the town. 
Well said, Selectman Wolsey, and uh, for Attorney Gerald on his uh, his beneficent remarks about Mr. Swotzer, um, and thank you. Uh, moving on, Roman four, Roman five, uh, consent agenda. I will so move for discussion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Would you please read? Resolution authorizing the issuance of refunding bonds, entertainment licenses, posted permits, the Victorian Inn, Boardwalk Cafe, North Beach Bar and Grill, uh, parade and public gathering licenses, uh, Winnicott High School Car Show, uh, May 24th, Seacoast Heart Walk, May 31st, Hampton Firefighters Memorial Sir, uh, Sunday, um, June, June 1st. Library trustee, <coughs> trustee, full member appointment, one year, Diane Crow. Recycling Education Committee, full member appointments, one year, Corinne Baker, Tony Drotzer, Tammy DeLand, and Norm Silverbeck, Silverdick. Uh, Energy Committee, full member appointment, three years, Sonny Kravitz. Highway Safety Committee, full member appointment, three years, Walter Cudlin. Uh, Recreation Advisory Council, full member appointment, three years, Janine St. Germain, Tim Anderson, Sandy Mace. Requalification of veteran tax credits, eight. Uh, Requalification of elderly tax exemptions, one. Thank you, sir. Uh, a second for that, Selectman Waddell? A second. All those in favor? Unanimous, three zero. Thank you. Roman six appointments, one, Mike Swelser, Finance Director, Monthly Financials. Sir. Thank you. As Mr. Gerald so kindly pointed out, this is probably my last official appearance going through financial statements with you. Um, next month you will have the new finance director, uh, Christy Pulliam, doing the presentation. What I have in front of us is the April 14th income and expenses. Um, it's the fourth report of the year, and so the target is 33.3%. The total income for the month came in at $670,000. Of that, motor vehicles came in at 237, which is 15,000 above the monthly budget. This now puts motor vehicles <laughs> $28,000 above budget, which is 1.1% on a year-to-date basis. Other major contributors: building permits at 34.7, New Hampshire Highway subsidy at 54, state water pollution control grants at 134.5. I want to stop and really point at this one. These related to the delayed grant payments that the legislature funded. And it actually came in, um, from the information I had, I budgeted it at about $112,000. It came in at one thirty-four dollars or $22,000 more than I expected. So therefore, not only was it um, really good to receive this money, we actually received more than expected. And we believe that it is also funded for the second year, um, so that will be in next year's budget also. Continuing on, departmentals at 75,000, summer parking leases 38, and the real estate trust came in at $58,000. Expenses at the end of April, the operating departments without debt service but with open POs was 32.7 percent of budget which is lowered by about $150,000 in the month's 33.3% target. I have started consistently pointing out that I'm using the open POs in the calculation, saying that if everything had been spent to date, plus all the POs had, that were placed were paid for, they'd still be at this level. So um, this is really getting towards more of the year of forecasting but I'm trying to slide it in here in the expense report. Uh, majority of the departments are below target levels, don't have any major issues. Some of the small line items are over on a year to day target basis because of the annual quarterly effect, where the annual contracts or quarterly bills are booked early in the year or in the first quarter of the uh, first month of the quarter. Page on page three, the management information services, one of the departments that was under my control. Uh, the four equipment-related accounts, which is repair and maintenance through the replacement equipment, have a combined budget of $81,800. The allocation of the dollars between the accounts uh, was set up several years ago, but as departmental changes, the needs, the year-to-year -year allocation might not quite fit. Therefore, it's easiest to report on them as a whole, so looking at it on that basis through April, less than 25% of these four Accounts, uh, annual accounts have been spent. So they're 25% versus the 33. So we're running well in that group. 
Personal Auto Administration, the annual, and that's the annual, bank buyback program, 189000 when combined with the employee separation cost, currently at 4933 are $128,000 over their year-to-date target. These two accounts are the reason why the overall group, which is the Personal Administration, is 3.3% higher. No more monies will be booked to the buyback program, but uh, separation costs will continue depending on who uh, retires and how much uh, accrued uh, leave they have left. Municipal insurance, health insurance is on target at 33.5%. That's a real critical number. I'm glad to report it that way. Police department is 28.2% overall when you include the POs. The two accounts in support services, which is part-time special officers, and the summer coverage full-time have a combined budget of $395,000, and only $18,000 has been spent. It's reasonable because the, the part-timers have not been uh, activated really yet. So that accounts for 113000 of the department's favorable variance that will be reduced during the summer season. Fire department, 31.9%. The four fire suppression overtime accounts, which is overtime wages through vacations, are at 21.4 of the annual budget, but this favorable position will shrink as we go through the summer season. Fire and police both have seasonal effects. Um, highways and streets is over its target by 1.6 percent, and I've, we've talked about it before, but basically it's the snow removal costs, and that won't really become effective or have any other effect until we get out later in the year. Municipal, municipal sanitation continues <coughs> to run slightly below target. When you put the two together, they are under their budget. Um, on page 15, the Warren articles passed the town meeting. The majority of the social services have received the requested funds. The ones that have over $10,000 receive half now or when they request and then half in September. Uh, the cost uh, for the first month, nine, uh, the first of the nine months related to the CBAs was booked. So therefore, if you read that, you're going to see 11.1% booked against the CBA um, expense uh, warrant article, where that's where we put the expense, and we put a credit into the departments to offset the increased cost so that it'll keep it more in line with the budget. Uh, so next year, next month you'll see 22.2. It'll creep up through the end of the year. Also, activity on several of the major war article numbers. Um, I won't. The numbers don't make much sense, but basically we spent 351 thousand dollars. So we've paid off the um, monies that go to the trustee, the trust funds, and s several other items. So <coughs> there are some large dollars that went out in April. Um, you have the revolvers, the recreation. Cable Committee, Private Detail, EMS. Um, no major surprises within other groups. And so um, I open up to questions on the financial statement, sir. Thank you, sir. Selectman Wilson. One thing that is really bothering me, Mike, is the SRF money that we should have been paid on an ongoing basis. And I know you can, can't do anything about that. But the state is starting to dole out these little bits of SRF compensation. Is that is that what we're looking at? Um, I saw a schedule. Of course, I can't put my hands on it, but I was looking at it over the weekend, mm -hmm. where it looks like the state is is parsing out in dribs and drabs to the communities, a lot of communities who have participated in SRF funding. I believe I believe we are referencing the water pollution control monies that literally there were there were l pages of SRF projects dealing with water pollution control mm -hmm. and one of the impressions and understandings that we've all had over the years was that there would be um, contributions from the state towards the costs associated with that i.e. there would be a percentage come back to the town 20 percent yeah. and the state stopped funding or they accepted the applications but basically they stopped funding that we yeah. we still had three i think three active projects the older ones that were we were still getting money but in the 
le the, pa the past legislature. They funded for two years the basically the list mm -hmm. of the SRF projects, mm -hmm. which is what I was really pleased to point out here in this report was that we received on three projects that we were receiving zero up till now. We received for this year $134,000. But that's kind of my point. I mean, this is ridiculous that the state had an obligation which it owed the communities, including Hampton, and it abrogated those responsibilities for a number of years. And we're behind the eight ball. The taxpayers who should have had the benefit of that money is not your fault. Taxpayers who should have had the, the benefit of that money coming in as revenue for those projects were left high and dry for several years, and now we're playing catch up. It doesn't give me much confidence in uh, what the state's doing up there. But that's, that's not your, I know you would have paid it out right away. Absolutely. Days. Well, actually, cash flow wise, I'd send it out the last day, but that's all right. <laughs> That's my big complaint. We'll miss you, and I thank you for your courtesy, both when I served as chairman of the budget committee and just in general, because I pester you sometimes. I know I do, but I, I really have appreciated working with you, and I thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as mentioned, I will be continuing on as a consultant to help with the transition, Good. and so you will see me floating in and out of the, the town office periodically. Slick window. You're happy with how things are going, Mike? Yes. Don't see any problems? No. Good. Good. And uh, thank you for your work, too. And I remember when I was at the State House and you were working with the retirement yeah. people, yeah. and you picked up the mistakes that they made, and they didn't even know they made the mistakes. So <laughs> you're sharp. You're on it. <laughs> Mr. Welch, final comments for your director? It's been uh, an exciting seven years. <laughs> <laughs> Very exciting in some cases. Um, I appreciate working with Mike. He's a real professional. He knows his job. He knows what needs to be done. Uh, he's helped this town out of more little tragedies that probably no one will ever know except him, uh, and I know a few of them. Um, his diligence and his, his, his work and his work ethic have uh, paid off big for the taxpayers of this <coughs> community, and certainly for the people he worked with. We all appreciate the time we spent with Mike. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. I definitely enjoyed working with you and, uh, and everyone in the town government, really, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun. This has been a great second career for me. It really has. Director, thank you on on uh, behalf of uh, the townspeople, uh, the elected officials in this town, uh, present and former, and uh, we've all been uh, great uh, beneficiaries of your excellence, and we appreciate it. Godspeed. God bless. Carry on. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Thank Good night. You. Good night. Mike. Number two, Mike St. Laurent and Arlen Chafee, local sports. Smutty Nose, half marathon with the chief. Yes, sir. Oh, good. Good evening. I'm going to jump in on Mike real quick so that I can just touch base. I asked for this meeting to be to be held. Um, the permits had come before us. You know, we've discussed this race before. Really, I think the only purpose, I'll say out front, that, you know, local sports and Mike, they're fantastic to work with. They're a great crew. They know what they're doing. We have every confidence in their ability and planning. Really, the only reason I think we're, we're here before the board today, we have every confidence in the safety plan we can conduct the race. It's really the issue of a 13-mile race and, the, and its uh, convenience impact. Uh, they've been great at redrafting this race to try and limit the issues we've had before with Uptown. It's a half marathon that's going to take place basically with two loops down the beach and one loop through the Uptown uh, in an attempt to really limit those concerns. So uh, I just wanted the board to be aware of the double loop on the beach, that there will be an impact on the beach. Mr. St. Laren has gone out at, at the, the uh, actually the uh, great advice of the town manager to seek out their support. I, I believe you'll have in your packets uh, letters of recommendation from uh, the village district as well as some of the beach uh, business community. So that's really why we're before the board, is to see that you, you're comfortable with the impact and approve the permit going forward. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah, basically it's the same half marathon, but we're, we have a little bit more of an impact. Instead of it being 30 minutes in the beach district, it's about 50 minutes because we go around the loop twice. It has um, a positive impact because now the spectators will stick in the beach district. We're going to 
keep them inside the parking area so they can stay at the beach district and basically spend money and enjoy the beach as opposed to driving on the roads and creating uh, a lot of spectator traffic on the road, which is half of the issue with the race. And the other part of the change is we're no longer going into uh, Northampton, um, so we're basically cutting across uh, Woodland, going through Great Gate, Juniper, and Huckleberry, sort of cu cutting up through Northampton due to some issues on the roads up there, uh, construction and political issues. So, so um, the other thing that's new since I last spoke to the board, and thank you again for reviewing it twice, I, we had had this approved before, is that a study by the Economic Department at the University of New Hampshire came up with a $1.78 million economic impact on the region from just the half marathon alone. And uh, it's, it's a real interesting statistic to have to say that uh, a road race is able to generate a lot of revenue for the uh, for the region. Thank you, sir. Selectman Woolsey. I had to chuckle. I was looking at your map and it shows the streets and it shows up Woodland Road and it doesn't show what links Woodland Road and High Street. I thought that was quite clever. Um, I, I've made my comments in the past. I, I have no more to make this evening. Thank you, ma'am. Sir? Yeah, I want to commend you guys. You do a great job and you, uh, other organizations that come in to run a race should take some lessons from you so that they do their homework before they get there. Uh, I also know you do a great job with charities, with the Rotary Club and stuff. So, you know, I thank you guys and I think it's a great thing for Hampton and I think it brings people in, it brings money in, it brings economy in. It's, it's great. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, do you need a, a motion this evening, Chief? Okay. I believe we do. Again, the, the issue on these permits are when I have concerns about the impact issue, I think that's outside of my scope. I'm a safety, and, and as long as I'm comfortable with safety, that's why I want to bring it to the board for the community mm -hmm. impact aspect. So as long as you're comfortable with that, absolutely, a motion to approve, and, and we'll move forward. For the Smutty Nose Rock Fest Half Marathon. Correct. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the Smutty Nose Half Marathon. Thank you, sir. A second? Like I'm going to second, but understand that because there are only three of us here this evening, I don't want to hold you up, but I'm still a little um, concerned about this on the uh, on the streets of the town. So I will go. Thank you. I will, all, all I will behave myself. Thank you, ma'am. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you, gentlemen. Thank you. Well done. Good job. What's that Woodland Road? a little river up here, but we don't say little river. Roman six appointments, number three, uh, Jay Dina, Conservation Commission, and Cindy Willis, Hampton Victory Garden, uh, for the Hampton Victory Garden cleanup, please. Good evening. Um, I'm here with Cindy Willis, manager of the Victory Garden, and we're here to ask for permission to do some clearing uh, around the Victory Garden. It's town land, so um, we'd like to get your blessing to do that. And I'm going to let Cindy explain to you the details of what she's like to accomplish. Um, hi, thank you for seeing us. I am going to assume that everybody is familiar with the Victory Garden on Barber Road. Mm -hmm. uh, it was located there in 1992 on conservation land. Presently, we have 40 gardens, uh, a work shed, which we keep tools in. Um, and underground water pipe to the gardens, which was all done and is maintained by the gardeners. Um, about, I think, six or seven years ago, I came to the board to ask for some help in clearing some brush to the left side of the garden, and basically that's what we're back here doing again. Public Works has um, been doing some work um, to the right side of the garden, uh, last fall when they put in the drainage pipes uh, coming down, I guess, from Sherbird Place. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Jacobs from Public Works met with uh, me over there earlier this spring um, explaining what their plan was to finish that particular uh, job and he has also uh, volunteered to help us in clearing the back side of the garden and the um, other side in back of the blacksmith shop. I do have some pictures because I'm sure what I'm talking about unless you've been over to the garden doesn't mean anything to you. Basically all you can see is when you drive by is just the, the brush. And the area. Area. I only have three of these. My That's okay. Was 
running out of ink. Fred and I will share. Okay. Thank you. The first page is just some pictures of the gardeners that um, are come in all sizes and all ages. Uh, the second is the Victory Garden uh, map of all the gardens. What are the blocks, Cindy? What are, what are those? The cement blocks that are there are, I'm assuming, <laughs> to keep vehicles from going out in the back. You probably know oh, that, yeah. oh, oh, okay. I think that that was probably a barrier. Yeah. Right. If, right. if you look on the bottom, mm, let's see, where is it? No, if you look on the picture of um, the opposite side in the front, there, there's the gate on the other end. Yep. Oh, yeah. Which prevents people from driving in. Right. Um, so I think that's probably what they were for. Um, if if you look to the picture that says the front of the garden looking to the right and then the bottom picture is the right side looking to the back, that picture is the side that has been seeded and um, after the drain was put in and it looks absolutely beautiful. The, the the grass has all come up, as well in the top picture, which is had been seeded by Public Works as well. The other picture, the left side where the blocks are, is all poisons, um, is all sumac mm. and um, overgrown shrubs, and that's the area where um, Mr. Jacobs said that they could easily come in and clear that, which would be right in back of the blacksmith shop. It would help the gardens that we have now. It would also be a huge help in the future if um, the garden wanted to expand. If, if anyone had interest in expanding the garden, we figure we could probably fit at least 10 more gardens in that area at some point. I believe this year you had more applications. Oh, every than year you have slots. Every year we have a waiting list, and it usually it, the gardens don't come up very often. The way we we run the run it is once you get a garden, it's yours. You get first choice for that garden every season. Um, we don't get people turning them in very often. Mm -hmm. So some people wait one one or two years to even get a space and. Every year there becomes more of an interest in um, growing homegrown vegetables with all the controversy going on and there are more and more people who are becoming vegetarians. Mm -hmm. So vegetables are a real part of their, their whole household diet. Uh, the last picture, or the next to the last picture, is the back of the garden and this area here is where we have our compost pile. Um, again, Mr. Jacobs had put pushed this pile of brush there for for us and did say that he could come back and take down the, the, the trees that are you can see there's trees that are overhanging part of the fence and he can take yeah. those down as well which would give us a tremendous amount of light and space for the compost pile <coughs> and the third picture third page is just pictures of the interior of the garden where you can see already people are the garden is probably in the best shape I've seen it in in a long time. So um, basically we're here to ask um, permission for Public Works to come and help us out again this summer when they have time to finish the clearing that they started and also maybe do that other side for us. Thank you. Selectman Wilson. Yeah, I, ha I am kind of uh, two thoughts here. I, I am really concerned about more projects for public works. We're having an awful time getting uh, projects done this summer, oh, you know, just regular street projects and, and highway projects. And I'm, <coughs> I'm concerned about diverting uh, some of their effort, although with only, I mean, I'm assuming this is the highway crew mm -hmm. be doing this. Highway I mean, and drain. We are... We are so overburdened and have so few people. Um, is the is the um, I shouldn't say ownership, I guess, but uh, just for the sake of discussion, is the ownership of the lots restricted to Hampton residents, or do you have out of town residents coming in and using the garden? It's restricted to Hampton residents. Restricted only. to Hampton residents. Okay. They 
the brush pile that you show in, in these pictures, now that's not compost compost, right? Was that a temporary thing that they just did to clean clean out? That that is part part of this. Because you're using vegetation, I would assume, and leaves and stuff, right. not well, branches. If you look compost. in the trees in the back there, yeah. That's all that's all um, bittersweet, which is killing the trees. Yes, bittersweet that, is very invasive. That o overgrowth there. Yeah. A lot of that pile is that type of material as well. Right. But that's not good for composting. That's going to be yanked away. And what yeah. Mr. Jacobs said he could do is chip it all. Yeah. He would yeah, bring in a chipper and chip it away. Yeah, because you don't want it sitting like that. The uh, compost, the actual compost pile is better seen in the top picture on that page. Um, on the middle left. I mean here probably. Right. Yeah, because that doesn't look like composting to me, the bottom one. Um, and also where we're doing the, um, how, how much acreage does this take up right now? Mm. Do you know? I do not. It's not you a don't lot. Know not a lot? Not a lot. Um, and when you went before the zoning board, Cindy, I heard you saying something about the poor condition of one of the structures there, but I thought mm -hmm. that had been corrected. No. So I mentioned it to Fred, and I said, you know, help. We had it examined by uh, Public Works, and we had it examined by the building department. They find nothing wrong with the structure. It's just old. Like any other structure in town, it needs to be maintained. <laughs> when you say nothing wrong with it, do you Physically, there's nothing wrong with the building. You Is this said the you old were cooperage? Yep. Yeah. You said you were afraid that, like, children might get in or animals might get trapped in there well, or something. There's a, there's a huge hole on the, on the side of it. I don't... I, I mean, there's something very wrong with the building. It might be... In, good structurally, but it's a danger to have it sitting there waiting for a little kid to climb into that hole or an animal to get trapped in there. Well, we can have a piece of plywood put up there. We can't take the building down without Tommy's permission. Uh, with That's the problem. Oh, but we can secure it then. We can secure it. And, and just a point of order and just to, to stick to the agenda, is this building part of the cleanup procedures that it will be not. done? Okay. It's not. If we oh, can okay. kind of stay on that cleanup issue tonight. But when Cindy was addressing I the zoning board. Actually, it, it, we considered it part, I considered yeah. it part of it because it, it, it's, it's been an issue um, brought up several times because I feel, I think <coughs> I wrote a, it in a letter to the Conservation Commission earlier this year. Um, I feel it's a hazard mm -hmm. just waiting for something to happen. Well, that's why I was listening to right. you at the zoning board I, I meeting, and I was concerned about that and went back. And I think there might be some confusion here because yeah. Mr. Jacobs, we pointed it out to him yeah. the day he, he met us there, yeah. but he and he said that it could be fixed. Yeah. The building mm -hmm. was was structurally sound, but it definitely needs attention of some some manner to just slap a piece of board over it just block it's off kind of a shame because it's a, an eyesore yeah. well something's gonna have to block it yeah yeah if we can just for safety reasons if that's what has to be done then the an entrance to that structure because yeah. sure. you really caught my attention when you were mentioning that I, I have no pro I have no problem and I appreciate what you do and this is a great community project but I'm just really nervous at this point about putting more on public works at this point in time. Well, I think the understanding is that they will do this on their schedule when they when exactly. time allows. This that isn't isn't a promised okay. Cuz you know it's it's when I there understand is time completely. we're hurting. Yep. yep. There are days when they can't do road work. Oh, okay. So. Okay. And that is exactly exactly the way it was uh, explained to me. It would be, you know, maybe there'd be a guy that comes for a couple hours today that can do part of it and, okay. and, and, and is not in, we are in no hurry for this. Okay, I appreciate that because I, I, I feel for you, I understand where you're coming from, it's a great project, but I was just a little nervous when you were talking about, you know, public works coming in there and doing I it. I don't think they were talking about just stripping the department, <coughs> setting everybody out there with all the equipment, just going, going at it for a day or two and then you leave. No, not at all, yeah. not at all, but okay. we, we just um, were told that we needed your approval before we did any of it. So. Okay, good. Thank you. Select the Waddell. As long as you've worked it out with Public Works and it's going to be, you know, in their off time, I have no problem whatsoever. A motion. I will uh, certainly move that we at that we see to it that the now which what do we call this building? Cooperage. 
that the Cooperage building at the Victory Garden off Barber Road is secured so as to prevent uh, any uh, intrusion by children or animals or any other. Uh, with that stipulation, understanding that Public Works uh, will uh, work on, on its reasonable schedule, uh, I would so move that we allow you to uh, um, make the changes that you're proposing and uh, spruce up the garden and the garden area. A second? Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. You're very Thank welcome. You. Roman 7, approval of minutes 1, May 5, 2013. <coughs> I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Second. Any, any uh, second by Selectman Waddell. Any changes? Ah, uh, yes. Page 1. Um, Selectman Griffin commented on a longtime resident, Richard Violette. It's B I O L E T T E. Yeah. On page 2, two four things. Um, I'm getting annoyed at the terminology, I think. Selectman Mo Woolsey motion to move. Can we get rid of motion? Just, we, we just, ma we just move uh, whatever we want to do. So Selectman Woolsey moved the consent agenda or Selectman Woolsey moved to authorize. I just like to get motioned out of there because frankly it drives me crazy. On page three, one, two, three, fourth paragraph down. Mr. Schwarzer added that he and the treasurer will be on the agenda for the 19th. They've re received a proposal from Divine Millimet. It's D-E-V-I-N-E-M-I-L-L-I-M-E-T. It, it's a real um, law firm uh, reviewing our bonds, so we need the spelling corrected on that. And most of my other highlights that I have in here are the awful motioned until we get to page seven. Um, <laughs> it, it's, I think, the fourth line up. Um, Mrs. She also ask about the duck crossing and whatever. I know there's a little mess in there, and that maybe should be cleaned up a dab. And that's it, motioned again on the last page. A second? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. And one of us would be glad to help if, if the person doing the minutes has a question on somebody's name or something like that. Just give me a call. I'm happy to help. Roman 8, Town Manager's Report, please. Ah. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <coughs> the Town Clerk's Office will be closed on Wednesday, May 21st. Please plan your business for the clerk's office accordingly. The town continues to have vacancies on various boards and committees. Individuals who are interested in serving, please contact the Selectman's office. They are posted on the town website. The annual uh, budget requests are scheduled to be released May 27th. The town manager reviews in mid-July. Budgets are tentatively scheduled to be before the Selectman on August 22nd. We are continuing to work on resolving outstanding issues surrounding the acceptance of streets. Work is difficult at times, and we continue to make progress slowly. As you can see tonight, we've been working on three, for three years mm -hmm. on those particular streets you accepted yeah. this evening. The Church Street Station lot has been finished graded, and Public Works is working on scheduling the paving for the parking area by, by bidding. Right. Crews are installing the bathroom facilities of the Church Street Station parking lot for attend in the attendance building. The town-owned streetlights installed last fall on Ashworth Avenue, A and B streets, are fully operational. Unitel has been requested to remove their streetlights. The Hampton Beach Precinct parking lot has been completed. Uh, we, have, we have met with dread on the JOP. The town's changes have been reviewed, and we are awaiting the state's proposals in writing. And we should receive those sometime in the near future. The update of the town code is in process with general code. That material has been shipped out to them. They've had it now for a couple of weeks. Uh, next, Monday's, next Monday uh, begins the bi-weekly uh, meeting schedule for the board. So no meeting next week. Uh, the week following, we'll have a regular scheduled meeting according to schedule. Mr. Chairman, there are a few other things that have come in. Uh, you approved a... Um, assembly permit for uh, Winnicott High School for an activity over there. We would just want to make a note that since this is for the school, there is no fee on this mm -hmm. uh, because it's a governmental operation. So, yeah. 
It's for the class, the class of 16, I believe. Uh, we received a letter from the Hampton Beach State Park Fair, dated uh, May 13th. Uh, it came to the chairman and the board uh, dealing with an activity uh, to be scheduled for June 19th to 22nd uh, for a fair uh, on the grounds at the state park. Um, we have notified the state that they need to file the necessary permits that are required by state law and um, they said they would take it under advisement and uh, get back to us sometime in the future. Um, we have sent them a letter indicating with a copy of the permits indicating what they had to do and uh, I believe that uh, council wants to speak to you about that following this meeting in a, in a session with a uh, non-meeting non session with council. Uh, we have, as we had indicated before to you, we had three people who have not paid their, um, their rent, their land rent to the town. Uh, we have sent them the final notice, as we indicated we would. Uh, they must pay uh, by the date specified in the notice, which is June 1st. And councilors, because of your prior vote, is prepared to take them to court at that point in time. Mm -hmm. um, right to no presentation. There was a presentation um, last week at uh, at the precinct, and I understand that one very well. The chief of police and the fire chief attended and and discussed uh, um, items for the um, emergency management with the uh, with the precinct. There will be a right to know presentation on 5:28:14, um, and at 7:30 p.m. and it will be on channel 22. Um, <laughs> it's, excuse me, at 7 p.m. Yeah. Um, Mr. Richard Upton, the, uh, the it's actually the town's attorney for collective bargaining and an expert in the right to know laws, is going to come and make that presentation uh, to town officials and private citizens. Are respectfully requested to attend if they wish to. Okay. So, um, I'll make sure I get everything here. Um, we have received back from the Office of the Attorney General the joint agreement between the Town of Hampton and the Hampton School District uh, assigned and approved by the okay. Attorney General's Office. Yeah. That's been recorded with the Town Clerk. And uh, we make note that the Hampton Beach uh, transportation master plan is being upgraded by the state of New Hampshire. Um, we think that the town should be included in that. We're not. Uh, in order to upgrade the master plan for uh, the roadways down at the beach, it's going to involve uh, drainage and it's going to involve traffic and it's going to involve flowage uh, on town roads as much as the state roads. So uh, we think we should be at least consulted on that. We haven't as of yet been consulted. So I'm just bringing it up to tell you that we've raised the issue. Um, with the chief's permission, um, we do want to use the, um, with the chair's permission, and I believe you were requested to give permission to reserve the Board of Selectmen's meeting room for Channel 22 for Thursday, the, tw the 11th of September at 7 p.m. Uh, this will be for a Board of Selectmen budget review of general government. Yes, sir. And we booked it accordingly, but I just want to make sure everybody knows that's what's going on. Um, and today we released the town's copy, 140 some pages, <laughs> which you all have a present tonight, yeah. of the 2015-2020 um, Long Range Capital Expenditures Report. So this is the beginning of that project. Uh, it's been issued to the planning board and uh, they will now appoint a committee and begin the process of reviewing that for the coming year. That is it, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Slick and Wilson. You stayed awake all week doing that, didn't you? No. Oh. Uh, oh okay. Uh, one, one more thing. There was a hazardous waste spill on Saturday at the hazardous mm -hmm. waste collection. Uh -huh. um, it was a good place to do it. Well, no, it's a very bad place to do it because they didn't put down the required material they were supposed to put down before that occurred. Ooh. And they didn't have the necessary booms with them, uh, and they did not report it. <coughs> In fact, the fire department caught them dumping speedy dry down the drain, oh, good the storm goodness. drain at the at the uh, uh, the parking lot. Who is uh, in charge of that? The, that's the southwest uh, southeast regional solid waste district, oh, uh, 53B district. 
they hired a contractor. Um, they were caught. Um, they thought it was cleaned up properly. We called in um, the state. Mm. We called in the Coast Guard. We called in our public works crews. Oh. Um, we did plug the uh, the outlet pipe from that from that drain, so none of it, none of us escaped the drain. It has been cleaned, uh, so it's all cleaned up. I've notified the district that uh, after last year, when they accepted explosives in violation of the state rules, in violation of our rules, that this is the last time they will be holding a hazardous waste day in Hampton. Thank you. So. We find them or take any action? We can't, but the uh, state of New Hampshire is uh, uh, looking towards the um, uh, the vendor uh, for the cleanup expense. Uh, they are out of state, uh, but I don't think that's going to stop them because they're just pulling the EPA and the Coast Guard. So, hmm. oh. wow. So we are chasing them. We're going to take care of it, and um, I'd say pretty much they're done as far as uh, any future house household has waste in, in, in Hampton. Are fire crews put at risk with this? No, but they've they spotted it. They immediately called. They, they took some action to uh, get public works there to plug that drain uh, so that none of it would escape. Um, they did what they needed to do, and they did it very efficiently. Mm -hmm. So and it saved us uh, probably a lot of trouble later on. This is this is very sad, though, because I appreciate where you're coming from, getting rid of it in Hampton, but then there are a lot of people who would come to the hazardous waste disposal and now with it being removed from town, I don't know what an incentive there will be. It just makes me concerned that we might have more being surreptitiously uh, disposed of. Oh, I don't think it'll go far. It'll probably go to Northampton. So. Oh, they'll love that. Well, it's going to have to go to one of the surrounding towns because the other one is Brentwood, the other side of the district. So. Hmm. Um, as I told you personally, Fred, I watched the emergency management meeting that th was held yes, at the beach, and the chiefs did a marvelous job. I yes. think that worked out beautifully, and uh, a good opportunity to broadcast and have some of the public's questions answered and to show that we really do have a good and effective emergency <coughs> plan in place. What's happening on Mary Batchelder Road? Are all the trucking people in jail? Actually, no, we can't put them in jail for trucking violations, but oh. right, we are issuing summonses to go to court. A whole bunch? I don't have any, I mean, but they have issued, they have, uh, issued orders to, to patrol vehicles to uh, patrol the okay. road and to any time a truck is caught on the road to issue them a summons. And we're still going to be mean over there for a while. Well, we're being mean permanently because oh, it's good. posted. Okay. <laughs> so. All right. Um, and there is no earthly reason for them to take that particular road. It's too narrow for I large semi-trailer trucks. It's a dreadful danger it's, in it's that small mess. neighborhood. Uh, but thank you for for that. And I st still would be maybe kind of nice to put some of them in jail, but we'll behave. Um, I'm getting complaints. Uh, people are really enjoying the school broadcasts on cable, but apparently there are significant sound problems with some of them. Do we know, and we probably ought to ask Brian, uh, whether these are screened or are they put on cold turkey or whatever, because people are saying we, we love the presentation, but we can't. Now the sound is a big it. problem. Yeah, they're 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 taping these from a portable tape device. My understanding is, and in doing that, um, you can't always guarantee the quality of the tape. Well, I know, but it's difficult uh, if you're putting this on public access cable and people can't hear it. It's frustrating, and I think the public should, you know, maybe have a better, um, better presentation than that. However, we've got to do it. Well, fortunately, or unfortunately. It's, it's out of our hands because it's, the school is operating the equipment and they have the people to operate it. Right. But do so. we are we under an obligation to broadcast something if the sound quality is poor? We don't know that until we put it on. Oh. Well, just we've, we're getting protests. Um, Mr. Uh, Preston spoke very eloquently this evening about the beach and about parking spaces. And I have had complaints from individuals who want to know where the heck the handicapped spaces went down there. Are handicapped individuals no longer welcome at the beach? May we ask the state that? Um, we have, and they are welcome there. And handicapped people can park in any space at no cost because well, that's the be state nice law. it would be nice if there was a sign or well, something. Well, they refused to, to put one up, and that's why they took all of the handicapped parking signs down. We, a number of occasions over the last year or two, we have filed protests, uh, verbal protests with the state because state employees have been directing all the handicapped par people to town parking lots. 
so the state can continue to make revenue off their parking spots. Mm. I mean, what are we doing? I just this, this, uh, fortunately the town's doing nothing. But well, can we at least perhaps um, ask the media to publish something advising people who have handicapped individuals? They're here. Well, I mean it really. And also, can we put something on on Channel Twenty Two? Oh sure. I, I would think that yeah. would would help. If Most we of the people notice. that are affected don't live in town, so they don't get Channel 22. Well, I've had the residents that yeah. live in town who've been calling me. And anybody who lives in, in town or any, any other individual who has a handicap placard or a tag that goes on your mirror can park at any state parking space for no cost anywhere on the beach. There is no cost for it. You can park there all day if you wish. You got that for us? I appreciate that, Kyle. Okay. Uh, with the uh, bathroom, thank heaven at Church Street. I'm getting excited about that. We will have first aid kits in each of the bathrooms in the three oh, parking the lots as well, are open, right? Yes. Okay. I, I I know I'm driving you crazy, but I had odds and ends on here. And the uh, joint operations plan. <laughs> Do you think we'll ever see that, or? Oh sure. Oh, we will. Yeah. yeah. I know the state is very annoyed at I us. I didn't for say when. For d yeah. Well, right. <laughs> for declining the beach rakings. Apparently that got the poor little things upset. Oh well. Thank you very much. Select and Waddell for the manager. I ran out. Yeah. <laughs> I asked, Surprise. I asked oh. everything that Jim was going to say. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I just, you know, it's the same thing with the JOP, but it's in their hands and you're going to have, you know, they give you any indication of where? No. Um, I guess sort of in a, a backdoor approach to this, we informed them of the vote of town meeting. They mad at us. And basically they said, well, we'll have to take that under advisement with the Attorney General's office. Okay. Um, their standard procedure has been in the past, you can't do anything without our permission because we're the sovereign and uh, you have to do what's in the JOP and you can't change it without our permission. So we changed it because town meeting voted it. The statute allows town meeting to do that. Uh, we've been complaining for a number of years because taking in that waste from the beach itself with yeah. the sand is causing a lot of damage to our transfer station equipment. And um, they don't see it that way. They see us as business, in business to do that. So ah. uh, we've told them it's not coming in. And they, they've made other arrangements at this point. Uh, but they also said since we're not going to be doing that, um, then we, you can't use our equipment to clean the... Uh, Sun Valley Beach and I said it's too late we've already signed a contractor who will get it done mm. as opposed to not getting it done which was happening before mm -hmm. so uh, I think it's kind of status quo they did indicate to me that they they would probably make some more changes to that and send them all over to us for review mm. but we haven't seen it as of yet and the other thing is on the handicap parking is that covered under ADA um, no, it's covered on the statute. Uh, ADA, you you do have to have a certain amount of handicap parking. Certain park. amount, and if you don't, uh, and the state's position has been they can just park anywhere, so we don't yeah. need to post it. Okay. There was a lot of handicap parking uh, at the state beach before, all along Ocean Boulevard, from mm -hmm. uh, from the playground mm -hmm. all the way to the other side of the of the stage, and uh, that was all removed. In fact, there's no parking out there at all anymore, and the handicap signs were not move further down the road and we have had several pe people tell us that they were directed down to town parking lots mm. because they were handicapped by the state mm. so they deny that but I I don't know because I wasn't there when they yeah. were told what they were right. told so mm. have we talked with the new guy down there at the <laughs> we've talked to the state several times in that over the last couple of years and they just say that's not true we don't tell them that okay so it's a he, he said, she said sort yeah, of situation. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, without being there to actually see something happening, I can't say that it really did. I also can't say it didn't. Yeah. But. All set? Yeah, I'm all set. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Thanks. Roman 9, all, you're welcome, sir. All business. Ah. All business. Slep and Rosie. I'm just going to, I think, continue along with this. This is the state of New Hampshire that wasted $84,000, and they were warned on those lockers down there. Yeah. This is the state of New Hampshire, and this is now I'm, Phil's, Phil has been influencing me. This is the state of New Hampshire that refuses to put supervisors 
anywhere on their property and and s refuses to pay people to actually look at the facilities so they let people wreck them this is the state that refuses to pay its share of the retirement contributions uh, and it was the state that set up the retirement system to begin with um, and this is the state that's uh, dribbling funds back to communities who participated in the SRF um, the state is not high on my nice list and if they never get back with a joint operation plan it's not going to hurt my feelings at all because I want to propose another addition another amendment next year to have them totally removed from our transfer station let them pay their way anything else like we'll see Thank you, ma'am. Sir? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, Roman 10, new business, Selectman Woolsey. Oh, I'll spare you for the evening. <laughs> <laughs> Selectman Woodell. Okay, thank you. Uh, 11, closing comments. That was a happy uh, holiday to everyone. Uh, Memorial Day is a little early this year, but happy uh, Memorial Day weekend. And uh, where, where could you spend a more pleasant weekend than in Hampton? That's right. Amen. Thank you. Hope for good weather. Thank you. Uh, a motion for adjournment. I will so move at 8.08 p.m. Second. All in favor, unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.